You can turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to talk about the term in the Spirit. What does in the Spirit mean? Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit... And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Okay, now there's some false preachers out there, and you know, some, I've heard other people say it, maybe they're novices, but there's definitely some false preachers, because the Bible's crystal clear what in the Spirit means. But there's false preachers that are saying, basically, that in the Spirit means here that John literally had his spirit leave his body and go up to heaven. So John was not bodily taken up at this point. He just, it was his spirit. Sort of like, uh, I guess the Lord was helping John to astrally project. Okay, and then in the occult, you astral, astral projection is basically that you go into a trance and your spirit leaves your body and travels someplace else. So apparently that's a scriptural practice if it's done by the Lord, you know. Yeah, I'm going to show you that that's absolute total nonsense. John's spirit did not leave him there. John was bodily caught up. He was taken up. In type, John is the one, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Christ loved the church, gave himself for it. See, lost prophets, uh, people that are lost, they don't understand typology in the Scripture. There's a lot they don't understand in the Scripture because lost people can't understand the Bible. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God. They're dead in trespasses and sins. So we're going to look at uh, just a few references here. I mean, we're not even going to go through. There's so many references to in the Spirit. This thing could be a huge study. It doesn't need to be. Because the Bible is crystal clear what it, in the Spirit means. Turn back to Revelation chapter 1. Now remember, according to false prophets out there, they'll say that in the Spirit meant that John, his spirit left his body. Okay? Remember that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. I, John, who also am, am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So apparently um, he was in the Spirit before he was in the Spirit there in Revelation chapter 4. Okay, so he was there on the island of Patmos, but he was in the Spirit somehow. He was physically there on the earth, but he was still in the Spirit. But wait, I thought that he was physically on the earth in Revelation chapter 4, but in the Spirit he was taken up. No, in the Spirit means something else. Right? And we're going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that means today in this study. John chapter 4. What does in the Spirit mean? John chapter 4. Turn there. John chapter 4, verse 19 through 26. It says here, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Jesus speaking to the woman at the well. Here. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know that what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Watch out for anybody who's anti-Semitic. Again, a lot of these false prophets that will try to mess with Revelation chapter 4, they're anti-Semitic. They hate the Jews. Uh, unless the Jews convert to their satanic system. I won't mention any names or anything. You can pretty much figure it out. Verse 23, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the, spirit, or the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I had to read those uh, verses there, 25 and 26, because there's also people that try to say Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. He did right there. Yes, he absolutely did. Jesus was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. 
for the Jewish people. But notice verses 23, excuse me, 23 and 24. When you worship God, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. Let me give you an example. I went to the grocery store the other day, had to get some food, and I'll tell you what, it was a powerful working of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it was just this amazing spiritual thing that happened. He said, oh, what happened, Brian? Uh, I went and I got the groceries. I came home. Um, was that in the Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit's in me, but uh, that wasn't a move of the Holy Spirit. I went to the grocery store the other day, and uh, I got there, and um, I'm standing there. I'll actually tell a true story here for a minute. I've told this in another video, but just tell you a true story. Walk into the grocery store, and I'm standing there with my son, and my wife says, i got to go to the bathroom. Is up in the front of the store, so she walks over. I'm standing there at the shopping cart, and i got my son and everything, and this woman walks up beside me, and she goes, oh, you might be interested in this. You have such a cute son. You might be interested in this. And she hands me this card, and it says jw.org, and you know, find the truth or something like this. And I'm like, oh, you're Jehovah's Witness. Oh, yes, you know, and I got to witness to her. You know, it was a great time of witnessing. See, that second one there, my second analogy, we went to the grocery store, but the Holy Spirit was there, right? He's in me all the time, but I was in the Spirit at that point in time there. The, the Holy Spirit was leading and directing in that situation, all right? In plainer words, there are some things that you're going to do in this life that are just the same things that all, you know, that other lost people do. All people do is what I meant to say. You know, everybody has to go to the grocery store or, you know, raise your own food. That's even better. But, you know, everybody has just regular things to do. But there are times when it's in the Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is saying, I have a specific purpose for you today doing whatever. He gives you an open door to witness. He sets things up. We, you know, another way to call it would be like a divine appointment. You know, the Lord brings you to a certain place at a certain time for a certain reason. That's what the Bible means when it says in the Spirit. All right? I'm going to prove it to you. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, beginning in verse, in verse 5. It says here, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. All right. Paul was pressed in the Spirit. You see, he did not leave his body. What happened? Well, he's there and he's just like, hey guys, you know, and stuff. And he, he looks over and he sees these Jews and he's just like, yeah, you know, he's talking there to, you know, Silas and Timotheus. They're coming from Macedonia and Paul's like, you know, meeting them and stuff and talking to them. And, and he just keeps looking over at these Jews and he's like, just guys, hold on a second. I got to go over and talk to these Jews. He was pressed in the spirit. You see, sometimes you'll have a situation where you'll feel, feel the pushing of the Holy Spirit. Like, go, go talk to him. Go give that person a track. In the Spirit, you see. Sometimes there are straight preachers that will do things not in the Spirit, but in the flesh. Sometimes they like the confrontational manner and stuff like that of preaching on the street. They're doing it in the flesh, you know. You, you you know this the you hear this thing of uh you know they go out and they'll say you know they'll they'll just be saying these little cliches and stuff you know and things and um you know I saw some guy the one time years ago and he's he's screaming you know no such creature as a sodomite preacher you know and he's doing all these things and the police come up and they're like you know you're just trying to antagonize these people we won't, you know, and, and they had this big sign, they're holding this big sign that says fags and a circle with a line through it, you know, and, and this police officer's like, you're just trying to make them mad, you're not, he's like, you're not even quoting the scripture, and the guy's, oh, we have a First Amendment right, blah, 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 you know, yelling and stuff, it was in the flesh, that wasn't in the spirit, you understand? 
In other words, when John goes, he gets called up to heaven, this thing he's saying, this isn't just me writing this. This isn't just me making this up and kind of speaking metaphorically or symbolically or something. He's saying, no, I was in the Spirit there. The Holy Spirit's leading me. God is taking me and taking me forward in time to show me whatever this time, whatever the year was there, that John is, is seeing these events of the time of Jacob's trouble. He's in the Spirit being shown these things. You see? That's what's going on there. He did not have an out-of-body experience. I find it kind of weird when you hear a preacher that uh, claims to be saved, and yet he's essentially promoting astral projection, out-of-body experiences. The only one that left his body in the New Testament there was Paul, and that's because he was, he was killed. He was stoned to death. And I believe at that point he was caught up to the third heaven. But he came back down again. And he doesn't say, I was caught up to the third heaven in the spirit or something like this. All right? It's ridiculous to even make such an argument. Acts chapter, excuse me, Acts chapter 19, verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So Paul was a major, he was like big time into astral projection. I mean, he was going everywhere in the spirit. No, the Lord was leading him. Acts chapter 20. Here's a good one too. Acts chapter 20, verse beginning in verse 17. Acts chapter 20, verse 17. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears, and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. There's New Testament salvation. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, these people say, faith alone, plus nothing, minus nothing, adding everything, but nothing added, and you know, whatever, all this confusing stuff. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Give me, give me a break. But here's the big one. Verse 22, And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. And Paul talks a little bit longer, and all of a sudden he just goes, and the elders go, what's going on? Shh, he's in the Spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize. What's, what's he doing? Well, he said he was going bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem. So he's in the spirit now. His, his spirit just left him and he, he's gone. The elders are sitting there for a little bit and they're like, what should we do? Should we stay here? I don't know. You know, when's he going to come back? When's his spirit going to come back? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd to even think this way. You know, I mean, you know, the Bible teaches that, you know, in the spirit means that they, their spirit's left. and They're astrally projected. You know, I guess John was, you know, his, his body's laying there on the Isle of Patmos. People walking by, what's going on? Oh, John's in the spirit. He's, he's fine. His spirit will be back soon, you know. He's just in that trance there. Weird. Absolutely weird. Romans chapter 8. You're going to find, Christian, that there's a lot of times that you're going to do things in your flesh. And then there are times that you'll, the Holy Spirit will prompt you to do something and you'll do it in the Spirit. You're doing, you're following the uh, commands of the Holy Spirit to do something. All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the Spirit, but after, or walk not after the flesh, excuse me but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 
for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be car carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. All right, a couple of things I want to say there. First of all, you hear these charismaniacs and they say, you know, do you, you know, you need to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to come on you after salvation. It's like, uh, no, the Holy Spirit comes on you at salvation. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, the Holy Spirit there, you're not saved. You're none of His. It says it right there in verse 9. Okay? If you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit. And what happens is, the more you sanctify your life, the more you get the junk out and the sin out and things like that, the more you're not following the flesh, you see, the more the Holy Spirit can use you. Okay? There are Christians that struggle with cigarettes. Now, I will tell you right now, if you try to witness to somebody and you smell like a, a barn fire or something because you've been smoking, or worse yet, you're standing there smoking a cigarette and you're telling people about, you know, the smoke of people's torment is sending up forever and ever in hell and things and you need to, to, to get saved and get right with God, they're going to look at you and they're going to go, you're a hypocrite. I remember one of the first times I was out going door to door, we were talking to this, there was a young woman sitting out front and she's sitting out there you know, about ready to light up a cigarette, and she's got the thing in her hand. Or, no, I guess she had it behind her ear. That's right. She's just like sitting there, and she was like on her cell phone or something like this, and she just had her cigarette up here. And we came up, and we got, you know, we're the Baptist thing. We got the suit and tie on and everything else, and carrying our Bibles, and, you know, we're here to invite you to Liberty Baptist Church. And uh, and we start talking to her. And uh, she's, she's like, as she's talking, she like goes like this and takes her cigarette, and she's like, you know, puts it in her pocket like I wasn't smoking or you know whatever and we didn't say anything about it we didn't say what are you smoking for or anything see if you're messing around with the flesh and smoking is a fleshly thing it's a it's a sin okay it is definitely there uh, if you're messing around with alcohol if you have problems with pornography if you have whatever gluttony they don't Pride. There's all kinds of things that you can mess around with in the flesh. And if you're doing that, you're going to have some condemnation come on you. Why? The wages of sin is death. All right? Saved and lost. If you continually live in sin, it's going to lead to your premature death. All sin is negative. All right? So you get to start getting that stuff cleaned out of your life, the Holy Spirit will, will use you more. But even the worst Christians out there, God will still put you in situations where you will be in the Spirit, in the sense of the Holy Spirit's always there, but the Holy Spirit will say, okay, you're needed in this situation. I'm lining this thing up that you're going to be there at that exact time that that person comes in there and you're going to be here and stuff like this. I mean, I've literally had situations where I wanted to go someplace or whatever else and, and I had a flat tire or some kind of vehicle problem or some kind of thing happened and I couldn't leave when I wanted to and I get someplace and it's just like, oh, I'm stressed out because it's like, I should have gotten this done an hour or two ago and then the Lord opens up a chance for me to witness to somebody that's there at that exact time. And then you realize, oh, actually the Lord planned the whole thing of the flat tire so that it would delay me getting here because he had a divine appointment. What was it? I was in the spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit's there leading and directing at that point. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's going to be there leading and directing everything in your life as far as the, I'm going to set up a divine appointment for you to go, go get a gallon of milk at the grocery store and you, there's no chance to witness. You see what I'm saying? There are some things that you just kind of do because that's life. All right. Other things the Lord says, okay, now you're in the Spirit. You're there. I want to show you things. I want to do things for you and with you. This is important. That's what the Bible teaches. To say that it's some kind of a 
thing where you, you leave your body. Weird. Very weird. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Yes, you are supposed to hate evil. Verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You see? In spirit. And like I said, there's so many scriptures that we go over to talk about being in the spirit and, and doing things in the spirit and whatever. But we're just going to hit a couple more here. Uh, go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So when you first get saved, you astrally project. <laughs> you know, no. When you begin in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit's there. You, you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit when you first get saved very powerfully. You'll feel that like, He saved me. Wow. You know, and, and you'll start to feel the changes happening. I didn't say you become just like you get saved and you're just like, boom, instantly perfect. You don't sin from that day forward. That is nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. A lot of the charismatics actually will teach that sinless perfection. The Nazarene church is big on that, which is absolutely just hogwash. It's ridiculous. There's no such thing as sinless perfection, okay, unless you're the Lord Jesus Christ. But you will begin in the Spirit. Again, you're going to feel that thing of the Holy Spirit confirming you and saying, okay, He comes into you, and you go, whoa, okay, um, your speech will change. I mean, it amazes me, uh, this whole thing of these people, they say, I'm a Christian, and then they use profanity. And I'm just like going, that's one of the first things that'll change. You know, I mean, my wife was a very, very wicked woman before she got saved, and, you know, her speech changed. And she said, you know, she used to cuss so much she'd make sailors blush. And she was part of the Navy, too, so, you know, that's actually true. But, uh, you know... But you get these people, and I'm a Christian, and they use profanity. No, they're not Christians, you know. But you begin in the spirit. Doesn't mean you leave your body. Just look up things in Scripture, you know. Clear up the heresies of the wingnuts out there. Galatians chapter five, verse verse sixteen. Very similar to what you read over in Romans chapter eight. Okay, it says here, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. How does one walk in the Spirit if in the Spirit means you've left your body? Again, I guess that's you're walking in the Spirit, astrally projected someplace else. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay? Very true. I mean, I could say a lot about that, but we'll keep things going here. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In the Spirit does not mean that you've left your body, brethren. You haven't gotten that by now. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, in, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. So every time they had worship service, you know, the Jews there, they are the circumcision, verse 3 there. Every time they had a worship service, they all just, 
And, you know, people walked in. What's going on? Shh, they're worshiping God in the Spirit. We don't know where the spirits are right now, but they're someplace. <laughs> yeah. Colossians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. And this I say, lest any man should, should beguile you with enticing words, like these people that you know, come out and try to teach that in the Spirit means you've, the Spirit's left. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit. Check that one out. Joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Okay, you say, well, there it is. He's absent in the Spirit, but he's, or he's absent in the flesh, but he's there in the Spirit. That's mean he's astrally projected. No, 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 no. You can see when the Lord is working in somebody's life. I have brethren all across the world that I'm in contact with and things, and I can see the Lord doing things in their lives. I'm not there in the flesh, but I can. my spirit bears witness with their spirit. See? You understand? The Holy Spirit will lead a Christian to do things and say things over in some other country, and you're going... That's exactly what I'm going through right now. Man, it's just like, it's the exact situation. It's exactly what I needed to hear. Why? Because they're in the Spirit. I'm in the Spirit. So Paul is over in, say, like Macedonia or something like this, and he hears down in Antioch, they just had, you know, they just came out and they wanted to make this, uh, they, some guy did this sermon on whatever, and Paul's like, Oh, that's exactly what I've been feeling. Wow, you know. See? I mean... Just a plain teaching of Scripture. Alright. Finally, let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. So he carried me, carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So, you know, I guess he's just up there. His spirit's just being carried all over the place. You know, poor body's down there, you know, just not knowing what's going on. It's just the spirit up there. Revelation chapter 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Okay. John is being taken bodily places. But it's not just a fleshly thing there. It's not just a normal, everyday kind of a occurrence or whatever else. I mean, you don't read about John. Oh, I mean, what did John eat? After the Lord, you know, went back up to heaven. What was their diet like? Well, you don't read about that. Why? Because it wasn't a movement of the Holy Spirit to say, I'm going to inspire you to write down your daily diet and, and your routine and when you get up in the morning and what you do and throughout the day. And It's not there. But God led John to do certain things in the Spirit that were worthy of being recorded. And you're not going to be rewarded, brethren, for just simply, you know, uh, every single thing that you do throughout the day. You get up and you, you make eggs and bacon for breakfast or something like that, and that was in the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit's there, but He doesn't have to lead you to do every single little thing. But it's those times that the Lord will set up a divine appointment, that He'll set up some kind of a, a time for you to witness to somebody. Those are the times that you're in the Spirit. It's what the Bible teaches. So, you know, you hear somebody coming out and saying that uh, in the Spirit, in Revelation chapter 4, just means that he was spiritually caught up and not bodily caught up. You're dealing with a lying false prophet. All right? Um, I mean, it's just a plain teaching of Scripture. just wanted to say that because, it, you know, Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, there's so many deep things that are going on there. You know, he hears a, a voice like a trumpet. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Both of those are rapture. 
uh, passages. They are talking about the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And they are the only two verses in the entire King James Bible that use the word trump, the trump of God. Okay? Not trumpet. The trump of God. What does the word trump mean? The word trump means the voice of God, the sound, the voice of the trumpet. Okay? It's a voice. It's not a trumpet. You know, you see that with the angels and things like this. You get back to the Gospels, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. You'll see angels blowing trumpets. Not one place will you ever see God blowing a trumpet. And God does not blow a trumpet there when the rapture happens. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, He speaks. Jesus said in John chapter 10 that He calls His sheep by name and leads them out. So when the catching away happens for the bride of Christ, you will hear your name called and it will sound like a trumpet talking with you. There's so many tie-ins there. It's so important. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. It's just right there. But lying false prophets will come out, these you know, just wicked people, and they'll say, oh, it's, it's not in the spirit just means that John was caught spiritually up and his body was left on the earth. As a totally satanic lie. Don't fall for it. 